On July the 29th, 1914, Austrian armies attacked Belgrade, capital of the small Balkan state of Serbia. The Serbs asked Russia for help. Tsar Nicholas appealed to Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany to save the peace. But Germany supported Austria. And in the next two days, the Russian and German armies began to mobilize. On August the 1st, Kaiser Wilhelm telegraphed to the Tsar, earnestly entreating him to hold back his troops. It's a telegram from Uncle Willy. Yes. Yes, I know, Anastasia. On the same day, Germany declared a state of war with Russia. Never sincere. Never. On August the third, Germany attacked Belgium and France. On August the fourth, Britain declared war on Germany. On August the sixth, Emperor Franz Josef of Austria signed a declaration of war on Russia. I solemnly swear that I will never make peace so long as a single enemy remains on Russian soil. Under its president, Rodzianko, the Imperial Duma, Russia's powerless parliament, supported the war with enthusiasm. When a cousin of the Tsar, Grand Duke Nicholas, a respected and popular soldier, was created commander-in-chief of all Russian forces, the Duma unanimously voted a huge military budget. Ah, Rodzianko! Ah, Grand Duke! I am your friend till death. <laughs> I'll do anything for the Duma. <laughs> As German troops advanced towards Paris, Russia's army of a million and a half men moved up to the Eastern Front on the few poor railways of their vast band. On August the 21st, when only the River Marne lay between the Germans and Paris, the French, through their ambassador, asked Russia to join the fight at once. The Russian first and second armies struck in the north. The German high command sent two army corps from France under two of its greatest generals, Hindenburg and Ludendorff, and defeated them utterly. We are 
happy to have made such sacrifices for our allies. Yes. We shall survive our misfortune. One battle does not win a war. Here we are advancing. Against the Austrians. Yes, but we need ammunition, heavy guns, more trained troops, food for the troops, boots even. An army cannot march without boots. The supply and training services are beneath contempt. I'll see what can be done. There are no medical services. <sighs> the Empress herself. It is not enough that Alexandra works for the Red Cross. The whole nation must join this war, and the government must lead them and have their confidence and support us. Half my troubles are caused in Petrograd. Only half. There is nothing wrong with the Imperial Army, but unless it is supported, it will die. At all events, the Grand Duke thinks I ought to change the government. Know that I do not trust Nikolasha. He is not very clever, and he tries to dominate you. He is a fine general. Nicky, he carries favor. Make yourself useful and turn the pages for Tatiana. There's a good chair. And he imposes on your ministers with his loud voice and gesticulations. No one knows who is Tsar anymore. You or Nikolasha. That is not true. The war will not go well so long as he is there. Our friend is certain of it. Then our friend does not approve of the war. He offered to come here and bless the troops. But Rasputin? And hang some rare icon here. Oh. I wrote back to him, do come, I'll hang you. Uh -oh. <laughs> we have enough troubles without that, Rodzienko. I've got enough rifles, not enough shells. There are no communications. For months now, I've been holding a line of a thousand miles with half-armed, half-trained troops. Men cannot fight against the German guns with bayonets. Where is everything? We're doing all we can, Your Highness, but we're opposed all the time by the Tsar's ministers. I can believe it. You see, there are plenty of factories that could make munitions, but their offers are refused. The government factories are only working at half speed. The government won't allow us to move goods from one area to another. Anyway, you can't get trucks unless you bribe the railway officials with vodka. There's nothing but repression and corruption in Petrograd. Your Highness is lucky to be here. It makes me sick. It makes me sick at the heart. My son is in the Guards Army, sir. He tells me they've lost most of their best officers already. The last time his regiment went into action, they lost a third of their men. They gained a few versts of ground, which they later had to abandon. Sometimes I wonder what right we have to send our young men into it. Through the summer of 1915, the Germans pounded the Russian line, forcing it eastwards. On August the 5th, Warsaw fell. On September the 9th, Vilna. In the words of the Grand Duke Nicholas, the army is drowning in its own blood. By autumn, the Russians had lost nearly four million men. They dug in a new line, which held. The Tsar sent for General Alexeyev the outstanding field commander from the Northern Front. What's the feeling amongst the troops? They will still fight for God and their Tsar. We have these men. But how often can the army renew itself, sir? We need nearly everything. I know, I know. We have no aeroplanes. And general headquarters. Yes, are... yes, I know. I'm going to recommend to the Grand Duke he make you his chief of staff. He will not have me, Your Majesty. He thinks there should be a dictator, sir. I am the ruler, General Alexier. Give me. 
me strength. I've made up my mind. And so, gentlemen, now that the enemy has penetrated far into the Empire, my duty to the country which God has committed to my keeping ordains that I assume supreme control of the fighting forces. Share the burdens and trials of war with my army and help it to protect Russian soil against the onslaught of the foe. I leave for general headquarters in the morning. Don't wear yourself out, lovey. Alexeyev will be my chief of staff. He'll see that everything's done. And you must be my eyes and ears in Petrograd. I rely on you for the truth. Send the little one to me as soon as you can. Will he be safe, Nicky? Oh, yes. I'll look after him. If he's good, I'll make him a corporal. God keep you. And you, my darling. My ministers will send their reports to you. And the Duma. Must I talk to those upstarts? Oh, no. I've empowered the Premier to dissolve it. is dissolved. Yes. What will you do now, with no voice? I shall continue working for the war through the voluntary councils of the people, so far as we're allowed to. It's a disaster that the only National Assembly of the people should be closed. You should know that. There should be a delegation to the Tsar. Which you would lead? For what purpose, my dear fellow? To tell him that the government is a scandal. And the war will be lost, and the government will be lost, unless he puts his house in order. He has taken up arms. His place is here in Petrograd, not 500 miles away. The country is collapsing here, as well as at the front, where the poor shiver and queue for food that doesn't come. The hardships of war. If they have no help and no voice, the people will rise. Then they must be put down. Maybe I should be able to do something. You, what can you do? I am to be appointed Minister for the Interior. You, my dear Protopopov, are Vice President of the Duma. It was a surprise to me, too. I'd always hoped, perhaps, for a governorship. Are you angry? I am very angry indeed. The Duma took an oath that none of its members would serve office under this government. You have betrayed it! And you'll be able to do nothing! You would never dare! There it is. Minister for the Interior. I shall make some changes. You better watch out. I have friends. At court, you know. You get madder every day. Come in. <laughs> Those are the copies made for your majesty. Thank you, Alexia. May I see? No. We're only battle reports. 
If your Imperial Highness would care to see the Preobrajensky guard drilling. May I have a cup? Yes, go on. <laughs> there goes half my sadness. And a great deal of my joy. If your Majesty would care to follow me. General Brusilov will attack here, over the Carpathians once again, this time, we hope, to Vienna. When? In June, sir. No, no, no. That's not soon enough. I shall go for my usual walk this afternoon. I have to consider some ministerial changes. Those papers are for Your Majesty's eyes only, please. By your leave, sir. If Your Majesty is contemplating making changes, it would be better to replace the Premier and his new Minister of the Interior, Protopopov. That man's ridiculous. General Alexeyev. These are loyal men. If only I had him here, I could convince him to away from me. He is so vulnerable. And he listens to everybody. Has the Minister of the Interior arrived? Yes, he's waiting on Your Majesty. I'll send him in. Very well. Dear Protopopov, his ideas are good, but I think he lacks confidence. I shall encourage him. Good morning. Good morning, Your Majesty. Thank you for coming, Alexander Dmitrievich. I hope Your Majesty slept better last night. No, I slept very badly. My heart. But we mustn't worry. God will look after me. I understand that you had to punish some soldiers who fired on the police in Petrograd. Yes, ma'am. There was a small food riot. We sent troops to disperse it. But they fired on the police instead. They were low-caliber reservists. 150 of them are to be executed. I have signed the order. I prayed to my icon for guidance. And then I signed. It is very sad, but you did the right thing. We must be firm. Sit down, my dear man. You look very tired. I had a strange night, Your Majesty. I went to bed, much worried by the problem. But in the middle of the night, I awoke with a, a very strong sense of our friend's presence. Father Gregory was with you. Not in the flesh, you understand, but in the spirit, yes. Yes, the spirit. I felt his wisdom and his strength. It's as though he was saying, do not worry. All will be well. I know. I, too, have had that experience. I fell into a deep sleep. And when I woke this morning, an immediate solution to all the problems presented itself. It was like a miracle. I hope I am humble, Your Majesty. Yes, humble, but it came to me this morning that with Grigori's help, I may save Russia. But how? I haven't worked out the details yet, but I'm drawing graphs. My father handed me his power unbroken, and I must keep it and pass it to my son, to Alexis. That is my duty. I didn't want it, God knows, and I'm burdened with it. Nicky, you haven't been an autocrat since 1905. That's what you and Alexandra don't seem to realize. She especially, and she had the worst possible advisors. You all find fault with Alex. On the contrary, I'm fond of her. She's a beautiful woman. I'm sure she's an excellent wife and mother, but that is her sphere. For heaven's sake, Nicky, make her stay there. She's hated in Petrograd. They call her the German woman. Oh, that damnable. Send her away, Nicky. Send her away. Let her live on your Crimean estates until the war is over. She'll be quite happy there. She'd be miserable. Besides, I need her in Petrograd. We must be strong and face everything together. 
How immensely dear you are to me. How is baby? I long to see him. Cuddle and kiss him for me. My darling little wifey. It is peaceful here, and the little one and I are both well. <laughs> I'm sending you my cascara bottle to be refilled. Please ask our friend not to interfere in military matters which he does not understand. When I read your letters, my eyes are moist. Would that not be sin? Oh, sin is one of God's instruments. We are all sinners, my dear. But the greater the sin, the greater the redemption, if we believe. There is more joy in heaven. Have you ever it... seen God, Grigori? Mm. I've seen the Holy Mother. When I was a young man, I was working in the fields at what? Korovskoy, in Siberia, it's my village. I was working in the father's fields one warm day in spring. I looked up. There was a dazzling white light. And in the light stood the Virgin Mary. She wore a dark purple dress with a veil. Like the image of Our Lady in Kazan Cathedral. Well, that's right. Well, I did not know that then. She looked at me. And moved the arms like this. I didn't know what that meant, so I consulted the holy man. He told me that I should make a long pilgrimage. Since then, I have walked to all the holy places. <laughs> the things that I have seen. What's your name? Munia. Oh, stay here, Munia, when the rest have gone. Leave a note of your husband's name. The ministers will find a job for him, and Manus will give him money. <laughs> He's a banker. And let us dance. Why don't we dance? God gave us legs to dance with and sing. God gave us voices. I want some music, some life, life. You are wanted, Holy Father. Huh? At the door. Oh. Uh, do not worry. Do not worry. The Holy Father has the protection of the police. Everything will be transformed. I have the confidence of the house people. I shall make many new arrangements. You must forgive me, my friends. I must leave you. I'm called to Saskoye Selo, to the Imperial Palace. Ah! The doctors did what they could for him, but the journey was bad. <laughs> He's been so well. Pray. There, my little child, be a brave soldier. Where is the child? Here, Father.
He is better now. He will soon be well. How is the Tsarevich, sir? Oh, he's well. Oh, good, good. I heard he had a cold. Yes, he was always delicate. Do please sit down. Oh, thank you. Well, what have you to tell me, Mikhail Vladimirovich? Uh, the news from the front is still bad, Your Majesty. It's not good. You have any ideas? I implore Your Majesty to reconvene the Duma. Why? To give Your Majesty support. The people will be disturbed by another defeat. And they know the government is incapable of preventing it. And the Duma will bring us victory. Hmm? Have I Your Majesty's permission to speak freely? Oh, yeah. See, where are Your Majesty's ministers, capable men of independent views, whose sole aim was the support of the country, then the public would respect them. But the few honest ones are not listened to, and most of the others owe their posts to one man only. What man? The false stariat, sir. Gregory Rasputin. You think he's false? Generally thought so, sir. His debauchery, his association with people of low repute. Yes, sir, I know. I, I know all that. It is said, sir, that he wants Russia to make a separate peace. And even that your majesty does too. That is a disgusting lie. It is publicly said, sir, that the Empress acts for you and agrees to these things. I hear, sir, I am consulted by all manner of people. What do you suggest? Form a responsible ministry who will work with the Duma and listen to the people. And banish Rasputin from Petrograd. I speak from love of your majesty and of our beloved country. Well, there may be something like friend in what you say, but, um, well, you exaggerate, I think. Uh, at least, sir, uh, give us a new premier. Boris Turma is not up to it. And I beg you, I implore you, get rid of Protopopov. He'll drive the country insane with his own insanity. He can talk of nothing but repression. He makes a muddle out of everything he touches. Well, I rather like Protopopov, but Sturmer must go, yes. Others have said so. Now, whom would you recommend in his place? Uh, the transport minister, Trepov? Trepov? not outstanding, but is worthy. He would work with the Duma. Very well, then. Please do not think, Your Majesty, that I came with an ultimatum. No, no, no. Thank you for being straightforward and courageous. Mm. Not everyone is so. No. Now, Mikhail. None of us have. Except Alexandra and her mad monk. You should have had her kidnapped and put in a convent. Make a plan, Nicholas. You go too far. Ah, Mikhail Vladimirovich. Sir. Mikhail, this is Mikhail Vladimirovich Radzianko, President of the Imperial Duma. Her Highness the Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna. How good of you to come. I felt it was a royal command, Your Highness. Well, sit down. Sit down. Give him a glass of champagne, Nikolasha. It has been necessary to form a family council to safeguard the dynasty which is being brought to the verge of ruin. You think so, ma'am? We all think so. My nephew, the Tsar, is well-meaning, but he's weak, and the government has become a bad joke. Has Your Highness not heard that Sturmer has been dismissed? Oh, he's not important. Oh, thank you. Protopopov is the Empress's go-between. He's as absurd as his name. Rasputin, after a few drunken hallucinations, gives his orders to Alexandra's hanger-on, Anna Virobova. Anna Virobova tells Alexandra, who instructs Protopopov, who simply does as he's told. Occasionally, which is a great bore for them, they have to telegraph the Tsar for his signature. Can you exaggerate a little? It is impossible to exaggerate where Alexandra is concerned. Your 
I think we should have faith in our new premier, Trepov. He's absolutely opposed to Rasputin. Nikolasha. Uh, I know him well. He, he came to me for advice, and I told him to see the Tsar at army headquarters. Now, that's 500 miles away from the Tsarina. My dear man, she writes letters all night. Because when Nikki's away, she never sleeps. Sheets and sheets of paper. Nicolas, you've seen them, haven't you? Mm -hmm. They're delivered every hour. Entreating this, insisting upon that, because Gregory Rasputin says so. The poor one believes he's keeping her son alive. What is the matter with the Zarevich, sir? He has hemophilia, inherited through his English grandmother. Oh. Oh, I didn't know. No one outside the court does. You think it's only because of the child she has this creature hanging around or being very kind. She's besotted by him. She didn't consider my son good enough for her dear innocent little daughters, but this filthy, lecherous beast has the run of the palace. No doors are closed to him, downstairs or up, as they say. I'm sure Alexander's far too straight-laced to have a lover, or even a holy one. He's in the pay of the Germans, everyone says so. The only person the Empress might listen to is her sister, the Grand Duchess Sergei. Ella would never leave her convent. She might be persuaded. I'll go and see her. I'm sure it would be very helpful if you would, sir. Everyone respects the Grand Duchess. Well, I tried to advise my niece when she first came to this country. I tried to teach her a little tact. Even an Empress requires a little tact, I said. She went her own stiff-necked way, offending everyone with her autocratic manners and middle-class morals. Sunny, they call that grim woman. Sunny. <laughs> what can I possibly do, ma'am? Now, you're president of the Duma, aren't you? You're a powerful man. And I'm sure you're all revolutionaries there. Madam, if you think I'm a revolutionary, you're very much mistaken. The Empress must be removed before she does any more damage. In my opinion, she should be annihilated. Mahan, you go too far. Now, don't tell me how or when. I prefer not to know. But if you can arrange this, you will have the gratitude and help of the entire family. Isn't that right? P please allow me to forget what you've just said, Your Highness. Yes, you're very polite, Mihail Vladimirovich. But you won't be on our side if revolution comes, will you? Madam, I trust that is an event which will never happen. Good night. I shall do what is possible. Has His Majesty returned from Zaskoi Silo? Yes. When can I expect an audience? This evening, probably. Not before. His Majesty likes to walk in the afternoons for the good of his bowels. How is His Majesty? Lonely, I think. When he first came here, he was frank and friendly. We thought we have our Tsar at last. He has freed himself from all the poison back there. But it followed him. You have scarcely an honest man around him. You know whom you're fighting. I have some idea. All the troops' letters. We read them are full of the Empress and Rasputin. Could you not have advised his hour? We have all given him advice. But there's a sort of vacancy. He stays for hours in his room doing nothing, pasting photographs into an album. He reminds me of a skull on an old battlefield that the wind blows through. Rittig? Oh, yes. Yes, I agree with that. He's a good man. Rittig to replace Bobrinsky at the Ministry of Agriculture. Well, we've done rather well. Three ministers replaced in 15 minutes. It's nice to get these dreary decisions made quickly, isn't it? Yes, sir. And then there is uh, one more. Protopopov. Ah, yes. 
I used to think so well of him, but of late he's been sending in somewhat uh, muddled reports, graphs. As you, as he is incapable of responsible action. Job is beyond him. He's become a laughing stock. Indeed. That is very bad. Do you like lilies, Mr. Trevor? Sir? Such a sweet scent. The Empress sent them to me. When I sniff them, I can almost believe that I'm at home. I used to have the Tsarevich here too, you know, but uh, he's not been well. I'm uh, sorry. If I might go on, sir. Hmm? Oh, yes, you were saying. Um, Protopopov, you think he should be replaced? I couldn't work with him, sir. And he would be quite unacceptable to the rest. I see. Every day, the muddle over food distribution and everything else with which he's concerned grows worse. It's bad enough for whoever has to replace him. You're probably right. <laughs> Poor old Protopopov. Well, we'll talk about it again. But, sir... Well, these little ladies need to discuss final decisions now. Very good, Your Majesty. Sir, the Duma? Oh, if you recommend it, I'll, um, I'll reconvene the Duma. It isn't possible. Anya! Your Majesty. My angel, I, I, I would like to speak with Anya for a moment. What is it, ma'am? Nikki writes. I am sorry for Protopopov. But it is risky to leave the Ministry of Internal Affairs in the hands of such a man. I beg you, do not bring our friend into this. The responsibility is with me. That means that the responsibility is with Trepov, of course. You see what they're trying to do? They are trying to do away with our friends. First Stoma, now Protopopov. Next, they will get rid of us. No, ma'am. Oh, yes, that is what they want to do, Anya. They want to destroy us. Nicky hopes to settle this without me, and he is going to recall the Duma. Well, I will not be left out. Someone has got to think of the future. I have Alexis to think of. I, I can't get calm. Please sit down. Oh. oh. No. No, I must think. I shall go to army headquarters tomorrow. Tell Friedrichs to make the arrangements. And, and please send our friend in. Yes, Your Majesty. How is the little one? Oh, bless me, Father Gregory. I must go to Papa. I give you God's blessing. He is dismissing Protopopov and recalling the Duma. They have advised him to. Tell the little father he must keep the ministers who are loyal to him. Well, it seems to me that our friend's ideas about people are sometimes very odd. Through his advice, I've... Well, I've lost a lot of good men who might have helped us. Let's not let the tea get comfy. What? Good men, Nicky? Everybody tells me. And you listen to everybody. Perhaps I've listened to you for too long. Oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, I didn't mean to snap, but... Oh, this business of choosing ministers is damnable. I sometimes think my head's going to burst. If you would only listen to our friend, all would be clear to you. Can you not see that Trepov and the others want to see us friendless and alone and that then they will get rid of us? Oh, Sonny. But they will, my love, unless we keep strong. Trepov seems to me to be an honest, reliable sort of chap. Oh, Nicky. Everyone seems honest to you. You cannot see the wickedness around us, the, the envy, even in the family. But I can, and that is why they hate me so much, because they know that Sonny is strong, like a wall behind you. You give in about Protopopov, and you give in to them. 
Forgive me, my love, but I am fighting for your reign and for baby. That child was not given to us and, and spared through all his illnesses for nothing. But we must guard his inheritance and give it to him untouched. Do you think that I don't realize that? I, I know that it is difficult for you, my love. But you do have help. Father Gregory speaks for the millions of people who look to you to lead them, to save them. But you have turned your back on him. Think of the number of times he has brought the little one back from the dead. But that has nothing to do with government. It has everything to do with government. Do you not realize that Father Gregory was sent by God to save the dynasty? That he uses him to speak to you and to guide you? You would only listen. Nikki. It is not a question of what a pop up or XYZ, but it is your power that counts. These men should be coming to you with awe and fear to hear your will, not sitting here stating their terms and giving you advice. It doesn't do to be always snapping and shouting. I do not suggest that you snap. I suggest that you command. You are the emperor and autocrat of all the Russias. Why don't you feel it? You should never have allowed the Duma. Those brutes think they can speak to you as they like. Well, you must crush them under you, Nikki. You must be firm. Be Peter the Great. Be Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> Do not laugh at me. I am in deadly earnest. It is time for saving your country and your child's throne. Oh, how I wish I could pour my will into your veins. You do, my love. You, you strengthen me, but those old days, uh, they're past. Russia hasn't changed, Nikki. She still loves to feel the whip. And those who challenge your ideas must be removed. Rodzianko and many more. It is war with them all, my dearest, and we must fight. Doesn't your soul speak to you anymore, Nicky? I simply want to do what is right. Then trust me. Listen to our friend who is close to God. Do you dare turn away from his wisdom? Oh, I'm so tired. I've never known things worse. I, I know, my love, I know. You were always my good angel. Will you trust me then? Take our friend's advice and, and keep Brother Pop off. If he refuses to dismiss him, I have only two choices open. I can either resign or come to an arrangement with Rasputin. What possible arrangement could you make with that creature? I shall offer him a large house in the country, all expenses paid, his own personal bodyguard, and 200,000 rubles. On condition, he withdraws his support from Potapopov and stops interfering. He won't accept. Perhaps you can think of a better suggestion. You're always full of plans. No. No. Ah, my dear Mihal Vladimirovich. So your assembly of talkers is open again. Not that it will be taken any notice of. The government serves the Tsar and Tsarina. Still, let me congratulate you. Never and nowhere you repel me. Mm -hmm. 
My beloved angel, we have lived through so much together in these 20 years. But I see great and glorious things ahead for your reign and for Russia. Ella has come to visit us. I do not know why, so I must stop this for a while. It's so cold. Shall we go in? You must rid yourselves of Rasputin. Nicky won't, because he thinks of you. You are the one who must do it. I could not endure my life without him. He is my strength. He keeps me calm. You are strong. Put your trust in God, as you once did, and stand alone. But my soul needs him. Oh, it's not your soul. You're obsessed, Sonny. Open your eyes for the country's sake and the family. So, it is the family who have sent you. Oh, well, they are concerned. They all want to see us brought down. You are unfair. Mihen wants her son to be the Tsar, and that is her concern. I came only because I am your sister. That is not true. You may go back, and you may tell them that your visit has been in vain. You must go now. You are making me ill. I will never give up Father Gregory. Gregory Efimovich, I'm making you a good offer. You're a simpleton. Do you think Mama and Papa will let Who? you? Who? The Tsar and the Empress will let you do what you like. Money. I don't need money. The poorest shopkeepers will keep me supplied. Bodyguards, I don't want your bodyguards. You're all a pack of fools. You cannot govern Russia. I have no such wish. What do you want me to do? Telegraph the Tsar advising him to dismiss Protopopov. <laughs> you all come to me when you're in trouble. You revile me, you'd set the dogs on me if you could. When you want any favor in court, you come sniveling to me. <laughs> Go and do what the Tsar tells you. Leave me and my friends alone. Friends? Who are your friends? Germans and German sympathizers. How dare you say that to me? I am a Russian. What have I ever done except for my country and for my holy Tsar? I have advised Papa, consoled Mama, and saved the heir to the throne. I work for the people, which you do not. I have implored Papa to stop the bloodshed. Is that wrong? I have made the government halt troop trains so that grain could be brought into the cities. Is that wrong? I have chosen men for the Tsar's council who love God, which you do not. I am a religious man. You are nothing! In a little while, you will be forgotten. But I will not. Nor will the Holy Tsar. Go and do your duty. I will not attack you if you do not attack me. At the moment you are protected. Protected? <laughs> I will tell you something. I will not last out this year. My life will be taken. I know that. And after I have gone, everything will fall. And God will be mocked. And Russian will turn against Russian. And the ordinary people will take the broken pieces of Russia into their own hands. Your people are at the end of their endurance, sir. Even the army is restless. And the working men are beginning to strike for want of food. 
Traitors or not, sir, they are desperate. Cossack and police patrols are needed everywhere. With respect, sir, you made a grave mistake when you took over responsibilities of Commander-in-Chief of the Army. Now all our reverses are blamed on Your Majesty. You have lost the confidence of your people. I would rather say that they have lost mine. The people of Russia, sir, have always been prepared to fight for Tsar and Motherland, but the two are no longer indissoluble. They will not be repressed forever. They will rise against you, and we shall not be able to hold them back. And perhaps will not want to? It has always been my great desire, sir, to see the Romanov dynasty go on, and Russia to be at peace with herself. I believe you. Then do not force the people to choose between the good of their country and you. Can it be that for 22 years I've tried to do my best? And for 22 years it's all been a mistake. Yes, sir. You've been wrong. Thank you.